Hello Summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. My name is Crumbs and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the weakest champions going into patch 12.14. I think everyone in all elos can agree that sometimes it can be pretty hard to win a game of League. The game itself is complicated and then you have to deal with trolls and toxic teammates on top of that. So why make things even harder on yourself by picking bad champions? You want to play something you can enjoy, but how can you possibly enjoy picking a D tier champ that handicaps you from champ select in a competitive game? By avoiding the picks on this list, you're increasing the odds that you don't lose the game before it even starts. And of course, we have other meta videos to show you the right picks to go with, so be sure to check those out. Now let's get started. We'll be starting things off in the top lane with Yasuo. Honestly, this is probably one of the worst states Yasuo has ever been in. He's been doing pretty poorly in mid lane and even losing more than he wins in bot lane where he generally tends to be pretty OP. But top lane is his worst lane of the three. The champ pool up there is just impossible for him to deal with. Right from level 1, most bruisers can just beat you down in all fights. You may beat up tanks in the first couple of levels, but as soon as they pick up Bamis and Bramble, it is over for you and there's no coming back from that point. Yasuo is purely a damage dealer. It's not like he has some big engage tool or other utility to fall back on, so once he's behind, he's pretty much useless. If you're gonna lose lane and get run over in the side lane all game, there's just really no point in picking him. Avoiding the champs on this list is a good starting point ranking up, but if you're actually serious about climbing, you should check out ProGuides.com. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros like CoreJJ, Aphromu, and Xmithy to help you really understand how to play your role. And if you want a more personalized experience, we have coaches available 24-7, ready to help you become the best. Our coaches are top tier players that have spent years climbing the solo queue ladder to get to where they are now and they're ready to share everything they've learned with you. Find our site down in the description box below. Then let's get back on topic, shall we? The other top laner you'll want to avoid is Kennen. Unlike Yasuo, Kennen does actually have a lot to bring to the table. His ult is one of the best team fighting tools in the game, with a good one being able to easily wipe out the entire enemy team, but he does so poorly in the top lane that even his godlike team fight prowess doesn't redeem him. He just isn't the lane bully he once was, and much like our last entry, he just ends up being a free lane for anyone who goes up against him. Then later on, you'll be run over again and again in the side lane. One of the main issues is how many really OP anti-magic options there are in the game right now. Bruisers have Maw of Malmordius and Death Stance, while tanks and juggernauts have Force of Nature. These items completely shut you down once your opponent has them. Taking a look now at the jungle, the first pick you should be staying away from is Lee Sin. While he's probably the single most iconic jungler of all time, being one of the very most played picks in League's history, right now, he just ain't it. He has nothing going on for him. In theory, Lee works by being a strong early game jungler with strong dueling for 1v1ing and a lot of gank pressure. If you snowball hard enough, you can close out games pretty fast. But if not, as the game goes on, he falls off. He does transition to making picks or peeling with his ult and relies on his team to do the rest since his early game efforts hopefully put them in a spot to carry, but in practice, Lee is just so weak right now that you're basically never getting those early game leads and when you do, you still can't really snowball it into anything meaningful. And once he falls off, the utility of his kick just doesn't compare to how much meta junglers bring to the table in 5v5s. This seems to be a pretty common balancing choice for Riot. When a champion is super strong in the early game, they're super strong in pro play since they can control a lot of the early game flow. Those champions don't ever do that great in solo queue, but due to their presence on the big stage, they get nerfed again and again until they hit 45% win rate. The second jungler we're warning you away from is Pantheon. Usually, we're pretty confident in the champs we pick for our meta videos, but sometimes we have a pick like this one that's a bit more iffy. We don't think the buff he's getting to his clear speed is going to be enough to make him viable, but we're saying that with a bit of caution. Sometimes a quicker clear really can make a champ OP, but here's why we think it's not the case this time. When you look at his design, Pantheon is in a lot of ways like our previous entry, Lee Sin. He relies on snowballing early on to do anything. If Pantheon isn't ahead enough to one-shot squishies in the mid game, he doesn't really have much else to offer. His stun is point and click, but it doesn't bring the catch potential of someone like Skarner that has a kit specifically meant for making picks. And even when he does snowball hard, at the end of the day, he's pretty limited in how much he can do in teamfights. 
His ultimate is easy for an opponent team to react to, and he's a very easy champ for frontliners and supporters to peel in fights. His early game ganks may be decent, but then again, so are a lot of other champions that actually scale well into 5v5s. Next up for our mid laners, the first champion we have is Ryze, and boy oh boy does Ryze get the treatment. He's basically never going to not be on this list. A lot of champions suffer from the OP in pro play, so completely got it in solo queue style of balancing, but no champ has had it as bad as Ryze. And what's crazy is that Ryze doesn't even put up great numbers in pro play either. Despite being one of the most picked champions at that level, he has a negative win rate across the board. In theory, yes, he's an easy champion to pull off, point and click CC, good scaling, yada yada, but other champs also have easy gank setup, scale better, and when it comes to the 1v1, they dumpster him. His short range makes it easier for higher ranged mages to constantly poke him and do what they want with the wave. He's also a very easy target for melee champions to snowball against since he doesn't have a great way to disengage them before they close the gap. There's a pretty strong argument that Ryze in his current state is the worst he's ever been in the league, but maybe I'm forgetting something. Which brings us to today's question of the day. What do you think is the weakest state a champion has ever been in? That's a tough one, but I always feel weak when I'm playing Udyr, despite his ability to maybe snowball and be quite strong and nearly unkillable in an age of shields and dashes and speeds and heals and all sorts of excessive mobility, Udyr just always feels like an uphill battle. But that's my answer and we want to know yours. Let us know down in the comments below. Now without further ado, let's get back to the video. The other mid laner you should only pick if you want to make your LP disappear is LeBlanc. The tiny little buffs she's getting on this patch are absolutely not going to be fixing her issues. LeBlanc doesn't lose lane because she goes out of mana, she loses lane because her W is both her main trading tool and all of her wave clear. If she wants to match an opponent's shoving power, she has to use her W, and then she's powerless to do anything when she gets poked down. If she wants to trade, she just gets shoved in and doesn't have any prio. The only way they can fix LeBlanc is giving her some wave clear elsewhere in her kit, but then they'd have to further reduce her already weak trading. Honestly, she's just another champion that could really use a mid-scope update so she can fit into the new meta. Moving things down to the bottom lane, the first pick we'll talk about is Zeri. I know Zeri was absolutely broken on release and she's been really powerful ever since, especially with the poke on her W, but enough is enough. She's still decently strong at super high levels of play, but even in Masters Plus, her win rate falls into what Riot considered to be balanced. And in Diamond Under, she's either right at or below 50% win rate. Yet they're nerfing her again on this patch, rightfully so, but they're completely ignoring Jin, who was permanently sitting at the top of bot lane performance charts for months. I think Zeri will still be playable in really high elo after this because mechanically she is fairly intensive, but in the middle elos that we aim at most of our meta videos, she's gonna cost a lot more LP than she's bringing in. By far, the worst pick you can go with in bottom lane right now is Aphelios. I really hate having to include him in this series because how exciting he is to watch, but he's another pro play victim. Despite having a win rate in the mid to low 40s pretty much since his release, almost any balance changes he's ever received has been a nerf. In the right hands, he's honestly still a powerful pick, but the right hands in this case would be challenger or pro player only, and even then I said decent. Other champions do what he does easier and frankly better. Now for our supports, the first pick you should never be locking in if you'd like your teammates not to dodge is Galio. The bot lane meta for quite a while has been favoring enchanter and mage supports and playing Galio against a double ranged lane is pretty much impossible. His Q isn't exactly able to compete with their poke and trades, and you end up being whittled down very fast. The obvious answer is to look for an engage to counter their poke, but his engage is both short-ranged and extremely telegraphed, making it hard to ever look for an opportunity. Most tanky engaged champs are just bad in general, but if you're adamant about playing one, there are a couple of viable options. Zack is actually one of the few exceptions being super strong at the moment, and Rel works at least as a counterpick to engage heavy enemy comps. Finishing off our list, our second support pick is Malphite. Look, there is nothing wrong with trying to play something off meta. In fact, sometimes it can be really OP. It may be a bit metagamey, but weird picks can be a great way to catch foes off guard and cheese your way to a victory. 
But that only works when the off-meta pick is actually useful, and support Malphite just isn't. The only thing he can possibly do early on in lane is poke with Q, but the range is so short that by the time you cast it on an opponent, you've probably been poked for half your HP. Also, Malphite is not inherently tanky, he's basically just as squishy as a mage support in those early levels, and is really prone to dying to an all-in even against lower threat bot lanes. But what about his post 6? His all-in is so good with his ultimate once you have it. You may be right. Malphite's ultimate is a good engage ability, but you and your AD carry have probably been poked so low that you can't even look for that engage attempt. On top of that, his ultimate is a pretty long cooldown, so even if you somehow do find a good all-in, your AD carry is right back to 1v2ing the lane and the enemy AD carry builds more and more of a lead through CS once again. That's gonna wrap up our weakest 10 champions on patch 12.14. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on our meta guides and so you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know what the weakest a champ has ever been down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until next time, good luck on the rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.